103 Military Working Dog Squadron was deployed to Camp Bastion, Afghanistan in August 2013 in support of Operation Herrick 19. The squadron was made up of RAF police dog handlers and Royal Army Veterinary Corps personnel to support the Force Protection Wing in theatre. The squadron was tasked with the vital role of securing and protecting Camp Bastion and its personnel against the heightened threat of both an intruder and insider attack. Sadly, both threats had previously claimed the lives of US and UK servicemen and women. The ever-changing tactics of the enemy, including the increased use of personal electronic devices, PEDs, to gather intelligence were a clear and present threat to coalition forces. These devices included mobile phones, SIM cards, lithium batteries, voice recorders, GPS devices, and controlled drugs. The Ministry of Defense identified that there was an operational necessity for trained military working dogs to detect the presence of PEDs, their component parts and ancillaries. This would be the first time the British military had used military working dogs for this role. In 2013, I was getting ready to go to Afghanistan for the second time and part of my pre-deployment training it was identified that we needed to take a dog out into Afghanistan that had the capability to find mobile phone devices and other electronic communications equipment and this dog was identified as Hertz so I, I was given Hertz. He was a fully trained drugs detection dog and I was tasked to to train him in extra capability and that was to find mobile phones uh, and um, communications kit. Around about eight or nine weeks trying to get him um, keyed in on mobile phones and, and the rest of and rest of that kit. Uh, and eventually, by some trial and error and taking some advice from, from other government agencies, we, we, we worked hard and we produced a dog that we were confident could pull off the result that we required out in theatre. In the British military, the, a dog had never been trained to find mobile devices before and since he left theatre, we, we haven't trained any, any dogs um, since. So yeah, he's very much a one-off. Attached to the RAF Police Operations Team for the majority of search tasks, Hertz and Warrant Officer Tanner were deployed and working daily within the numerous compounds, both military and civilian, that made up the vast footprint of Camp Bastion. His role was to ensure areas were free of PEDs and drugs and to secure the safety of military personnel and local people. A threat had been identified out in theatre that um, communications were being passed over the fence in both directions uh, and this was something that we needed to stop in order to keep British and coalition forces safe. Uh, throughout the nine months that we were together in Afghanistan, Hertz and I travelled roughly all around the country. We concentrated most of our efforts on the bases within Southern Helmand and we never left the place leaving people disappointed. He always produced results. One search that does spring to mind is, is a search that uh, on a particularly hot day temperatures would quite often get into the, the plus 40s in terms of degrees so it was really uncomfortable for, for the handlers and for the dogs and Hertz was working for roughly 40-45 minutes in plus 40 degree temperatures which is a really long time. He'd, he'd worked very hard and he was starting to flag and I, I was just about to, to call an end to the search uh, and we left the tent. He then picked his head up and he ran and he went 30 yards to another tent, started jumping up and down outside the tent and it turned out that there were two mobile phones rolled up in the outer skin of the tent. News of Hertz's success spread and requests were soon coming in for him to be used as part of the search operations conducted by US and Danish forces. And he was also deployed to locations throughout Afghanistan, including Kabul and Helmand province. The longer we were on tour, the, the more Hertz's reputation spread. So when we turned up to carry out a search, he certainly wasn't the most welcome visitor in, in any location that we arrived. People were aware of what he could do, they were aware of what he could find. So let's just say he wasn't a popular visitor in certain places. Over the two tours that, that Hertz was there, he had over 50 individual fines uh, and well over 100 items of contraband were seized. Uh, the majority of that was electronic devices 
alongside some uh, illicit drugs uh, to, to add to the tally. In May 2014, my tour came to an end uh, after nine and a half months, uh, and I then handed him over to Corporal Simon Dack. Uh, the handover period took around about 10 days. Despite the change of handler, Hertz continued to work with pinpoint accuracy. I was still getting used to the, the lay of the land, and we used to go out with the RAF police search team and we used to go around contractors, uh, so the locally employed, and translators, and also employed to British personnel. And Hertz took it in his stride. He was happy to search. He's got a high drive, he's keen, and he enjoys what he does. Hertz got that much of a reputation of finding everything. Honestly, he was finding everything on all the vehicles that the, AM, the AMK9 handler, well, I think there's four of them, they, they refused to go in front of me because Hertz kept finding the finds or the kit that they were missing. So then they were following me, hoping they would follow up and find stuff, and they never did. So that shows you how good Hertz actually is. During the 13 months of Hertz's tour, there was not a single rocket attack on Camp Bastion. His work was vital to ensure the safety of all personnel working there, both locals and military. It is difficult to truly estimate how many lives he saved through his actions. His specialist training prevented attacks and uncovered intelligence, which gave British and Allied forces an advantage. There were no attacks on British forces on the bases that we were on. I would put that down in some way that the work that, that Hertz was doing stopped communication and stopped information uh, and took away the chances that people were given to inflict harm upon British and coalition troops. Hertz's unique set of skills have never been seen before in a military theatre. In the ever-changing environment of military conflict, Hertz was at the cutting edge of defending troops from the ever-evolving advances in digital intelligence. His work undoubtedly saved many lives, making him a worthy recipient of the PDSA Dickin Medal. I'm Jan McLaughlin and I'm Director General of PDSA. Hertz has a unique set of skills never seen before in a military setting. He played a vital role within the RAF police squadron during his time in Afghanistan, protecting British and Allied troops. His gallantry and devotion to duty undoubtedly saved many lives. PDSA is a charity founded over 100 years ago to give veterinary help and support to the pets of the most vulnerable people in society. When our charity's founder, Maria Dickin, began our vital work back in 1917, she saw the importance of animals and the role they played to enrich and enhance human life. Which is why she introduced the PDSA Animal Awards programme to raise the status of animals in society by honouring the incredible contribution they make to our lives, both in the armed forces, the emergency services or our own homes. Hertz's extraordinary work warrants our most prestigious medal and it's with great pride that we have awarded him the PDSA Dickin Medal, the Animals Victoria Cross, for his life-saving devotion to duty while serving in military conflict. I'm over the moon he's got the PDSA Dickin Medal because he really does deserve it. I'm incredibly proud of Hertz and the fact that he's been awarded the PDSA Dickin Medal is a massive honour. Um, it certainly doesn't come around very often and for an RAF police dog to be awarded the medal is, is fantastic. He did some amazing work in theatre and, and I'm proud to be associated with the dog.